evolution. Sometimes this word is quite bizarre in video games, especially when we talk about racing games. Why? Because sometimes when developers announce a new chapter of our favorite racing game, we expect a lot of improvements on graphics, content and physics. Well, Project Cut 3 isn't a real evolution from Project Cut 2. It's a revolution. Objectively speaking, not better, not worse. It's just different. And in this video I show you why this game is so different compared to the previous Project Cut 2. And if it's the game you were waiting for or not. Ready? One word, Sim Arcade. Mm, correction, more arcade than Sim. Why? The tires model is we simply fled uh, compared to Project Cut 2. Generic cars are more slippery and tend to drift more, but it's quite easy to recover the control. Moreover, the tire deformation present in Project Cut 2 disappeared. Tires temperature present in Project Car 2 disappeared. Even tires wear present in Project Car 2 disappeared. Tires compound is present, but uh, considering the wear isn't present, of course, the, the softer compound is the best choice almost every time. At this point you're starting to understand why I don't consider Project Cut 3 an evolution from Project Cut 2, but a different game for a different target of gamers. These changes make the game more immediate, easier and better for beginners. But of course, Real Sim Racer will heavily disappointed. If you want my opinion about it, I like the driving style because it's fun. But all uh, those uh, lacks make me really sad. On the first setting, suspension are quite soft and absorb pretty well the bumps and the curbs. Thanks to these uh, default settings, cars are quite easy to control since the beginning, because the car is less sensitive to the track conformation. The suspension system is well made and well simulated. I appreciate the difference in terms of car reaction between soft and stiff suspension, especially on a bumpy track like the Nürburgring. With stiffer suspension and dampers, car jumps more. That difference is uh, noticeable even on the force feedback, which is smoother with soft suspension settings. At least uh, this element uh, makes uh, Project Cars 3 a bit more realistic. It's uh, strange, 
As you can see on the dashboard, uh, the air temperature is present and changes according to the season and weather. But I don't get why developers included air temperature if it doesn't have any influence on the car, tires or engine. Maybe in, uh, on the track? I don't know. I made the same lap times uh, with different air temperature. The temperature is like a trace of uh, Project Car 2, considering the third game is based on the second one. This trace is present also on the season, dynamic weather system and track surface, including the unfamous puddles, uh, which they were too invasive in the Project Car 2. Here the ecoplane uh, is present on uh, raining conditions, but way less uh, compared uh, to Project Car 2. The track surface grip changes a lot according to the weather. But uh, there is another problem. There aren't wet and dry tires for race cars, because uh, there is an unique uh, tire for all conditions, and uh, that's a real unrealistic feature, even for a C-Market game. Wind is just visual. A good point uh, is the force feedback. Uh, the sensations are quite okay. You can feel the bumps and curbs pretty well. Slipstream is present as well, but uh, it isn't quite powerful. The images are just visual. Yep, only visual. But visually decent at least. I tried to torture a car to increase the engine temperature to break it, but uh, it was uh, totally useless. The engine temperature increases, but the engine its a rock. It doesn't break at all. Same for the brake temperature, only visual, no influence at all on the car reaction. Aerodynamic system is quite good considering the car reacts pretty well to the downforce changes. But the setup, here some people will cry because uh, many elements from Project Cars 2 just uh, disappeared. One more element to confirm the sim arcade classification of this third game. Luckily, you can feel the difference in terms of uh, car reaction between front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and uh, four wheel drive cars. Okay, now, can someone tell me how the hell I can enter the pits? Of course you can't! There is no fuel to add because there is no fuel consumption. There aren't tires to change because uh, they don't wear. There aren't cars to repair because the mechanical damages aren't present in this game. But most importantly, there aren't pits because there is no qualification mode. Yep! No qualification, no free practice with other opponents in both offline and online modes. Well, okay then. There are two starts type, grid and rolling start, but uh, there is no jump start. Uh, when you break the arula, simply the car breaks and slow down automatically. Yep, you can tune the, your car and add parts to increase the power spending the in-game credits, like uh, the Gran Turismo style. But uh, 
uh, it doesn't add a lot to the experience in my opinion. Probably after reading my conclusions uh, you will think, uh, whoa, this game is such a disappointment. My answer is no, it isn't. I think the biggest mistake of this game is its name. The name shouldn't be Project Earth 3, because uh, it uh, has nothing to do with the series. It looks like a mix between uh, Greed uh, 2019 and Project Cars. This game should have a different name in my opinion. As I told you in the beginning of this video, this game is a revolution of the series and like uh, all revolutions, it's hard for us to accept big changes. The arcade sim genre is full of players and Codemasters, the new owner of uh, Slide Mad Studios, probably wanted to give us a game uh, playable by most of players, not just by professionals. This game, uh, it isn't bad. It's just uh, different than uh, our expectations. Accept it or refuse it. But uh, despite the lax, uh, this similar arcade racing game has something to give us. The fun. Just simple fun. And uh, this game gave me genuine fun while I was testing it. I like it. <laughs> 